Also, here's a little physique update, just so you guys can see what I look like. Oof. <sighs> What's happening, guys? It's Matt Ogus here. Just had a killer shoulders, lats, and arms workout. Crushed it. Oh, man, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling pumped. But uh, I'm going to show you the footage from today's workout. But something on my mind lately has been of uh, competing this year. And I'm not totally sure whether I am or I'm not. But, uh, you know, I've said it on Instagram and Snapchat before. I don't think I've said it here on YouTube yet, but I am considering competing again this year in natural bodybuilding. And certain reasons for it. You know, I got a lot of, uh, there's a lot of pros and cons to competing, especially considering, um, you know, what I do for a living. Obviously, there are a lot of pros, but a lot of people don't see the cons, uh, the negatives, the negative consequences of getting really low body fat and so on. But one of the reasons that I do want to compete this year is because there's a part of me that feels like I simply didn't do my best last year, you know? I did bring my best physique ever, um, but I didn't bring it to a stage, which is a totally different ball game compared to just getting, you know, shredded. Uh, it's a totally different thing to actually show up shredded on a stage at a specific day and time. So I kind of, kind of want to just test myself because towards the end of the contest prep 2016, especially the last uh, five, six weeks, I, uh, I really was, I slipped, you know? My discipline started to fade really quickly and there were times that uh, you know, I just didn't, didn't make the right choice. And I didn't practice discipline. So, you know, one of the things this year, I kind of want to just test that out again and really see how disciplined I can be because I know, I know that I could uh, show up better on a stage. And it's really not about, it's really not about, you know, looking better than somebody else uh, because things like that doesn't, don't matter to me. It's not even necessarily about a pro card, though that would be great, you know, to get a natural bodybuilding pro card this year. Um, for me, it would be really about just bringing my best physique to a stage. So that's something I've been contemplating, I'm thinking about. Uh, I know some of you guys want me to do it, some of you guys would rather just have me, you know, bulk for another year. Um, in terms of natural bodybuilding, you know, the, the best progress a natural bodybuilder can make is by taking, you know, multiple year-long off-seasons. So, uh, but the thing is this, that's assuming you showed up your best on stage. Now, I don't, won't necessarily have more muscle um, in, in general compared to 2016, I'll most likely have similar amounts of total muscle. Perhaps certain things will be better than 2016, such as lats, uh, probably calves. But for the most part, I'll have the same lean body mass as 2016. It's just that um, where I can improve is showing up on stage better. So let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below. Um, Matt versus Redemption, you know, something like that. Some, let me know what you think a good, uh, you know, series title would be. Matt versus what is it? Fucking 4.0 now. Matt versus Redemption. Matt's Redemption. I don't know, something like that. Leave me a good video or a series title below. Also, just let me know in general what you think. You know, if it's a good idea, if it's a bad idea, and you know, obviously, uh, it would be my choice. But I do like to know what you guys think. So, all right, here's today's uh, workout shoulders, a little bit of lats, and a lot of arms. Um, I actually have to finish up this workout. I gotta run the rack with hammer curls, so I'm gonna hit that right now. So enjoy the video, guys. See you in the comment section. All right, guys, so if I am competing next year, I do wanna put in some solid work in my lats. So I'm starting with the uh, neutral grip weighted pull-ups, and I'm doing these about twice a week right now with a total of three times per week hitting uh, some sort of neutral grip vertical pull. So on my other, on my heavy upper day, I'm doing um, neutral grip pull downs, and then for the other two upper body workouts in the week, I work out on an eight eight day week at the moment. Uh, upper lower off, upper lower upper lower off repeat. So uh, hitting lats in a vertical pull about three times per every eight day week, and uh, twice in terms of weighted pull ups. So really just hammering this in. Every single workout I'll be adding most likely 1.25 pounds to these. As you can see right there, that's 1.25 pounds attached to a 45. 
So every time, just adding 1.25, 1.25. So every four workouts, that's another five pounds. So that's just a, such a simple way. If you wanted to keep your reps the same and just add weight every single time, uh, I really like sets of eight. Like they're just my favorite rep range in terms of these weighted pull-ups. So that's why I'm sticking to that. I'm not going, you know, eight to ten reps. I'm just sticking to eight reps, adding weight every single time. Now, uh, I was really surprised because I started to feel pretty lightheaded during this workout. I, uh, Brittany and I, we actually went skydiving just a couple days, um, actually just the day before doing this workout, and my head felt a little weird. And I think I also didn't drink enough water. So I was pretty surprised that uh, this workout, I was killing it as, as good as I was. Like this weight just felt super easy, even though I felt, I didn't feel my best at all. Like I felt just <laughs> out there. <laughs> but um, that was set one. Uh, here's set three that I have posted on Instagram. You've probably seen it by now if you follow me on Instagram. Make sure you uh, join my notifications gang so to speak and uh, it allows you to uh, just see when I post and pretty soon I'll probably start rewarding those who you know comment the fastest on my Instagram post just to show some love but I decided to go for AMRAP on the third set of what was supposed to be 10 took my shirt off just to see how I looked and I actually busted out and hit 15 so that was pretty pretty nuts I'm not sure what I would be able to do if this was the first uh, exercise and the first set. Who knows, maybe even 15 to 20. I'm assuming probably 15 to 20. Um, but since it was the third set, um, you know, 15 was a, good, was a good number. Now this workout is a bit different from how I normally um, structure my, my, my lifts and my programs and all that stuff. I don't normally do two vertical pushes in a single day, but, uh, this workout was a, uh, just a really shoulders based upper body workout. So it was really shoulders and arms based with some lats, no chest in this workout. I did three sets of 10. I started with 75s. I think I dropped it to seventies for set two and three. And for some reason, doing these standing just felt really good. And also, I don't think, um, I recommend if you're gonna do them at all on a seated bench, do them on a really um, on a really vertical one. But obviously, it's totally preference. I just recommend doing it on a vertical one if you're gonna be doing it like that. And uh, after that, I did a super set of these dumbbell swings for set to 25 with what you'll see in just a moment. Now this looks like it's literally doing jack shit, but um, I get it's almost like that's the point. You're working your adults in just one of the one small portion of the full range of motion, and really just in the portion that you're really hitting your adults. Like they're actually they actually feel isolated as hell just going like this. Seriously, they felt they were burning. So after three sets, like they were my. My shoulders were just completely rounded and capped and everything. But uh, that was like a primer to this co more compound movement just to, I guess, you know, hit, hit the upper back and the rear delts a little bit more. And um, typically this isn't how I hit, this isn't how I've hit most of my workouts over, you know, my 10 year, 10 and a half year lifting career. But uh, as of right now, it's just, it's keeping shit fun. It's keeping it, um, I'm loving it. And um, it's, it's, it's almost like a personal choice. Uh, there's lots of different ways to skin a cat. Um, and as long as you kind of know what you're doing, then you'll probably be fine. Um, after that, dumbbell side laterals, three sets of 15. Typically my favorite side delt exercise is the uh, cable, cable side laterals. Uh, but with this certain workout, I was just pretty much following it somewhat to a T, not exactly, but for the most part, plus, um, Doing these, it's typically faster. You can get in and out of the gym faster than doing single arms since usually you're, it takes a little bit more time. And plus, it just depends. Um, because with a single arm cable side raises, uh, you could kind of do them alternating fashion. Just hit right and then left and right and then left. Since uh, while you're hitting your left side, you know, your right side's resting. So you can pretty much just blast those out. Just not like superset, but practically. 
Next, I was doing these dumbbell upright rows just to further just smash side delts. As you can see, I was using 50 pounds here. Uh, I think I dropped it down to 40s on the last set since I started to use a little bit more body English than I would have liked. I think I did sets of 12 or 15, maybe 12, not totally sure. And once again, I usually in the past would have done, you know, a compound, the compounds before the ISOs, but um, almost like for fun, so to speak, changed that. I wouldn't say the benefits are greater this way. Uh, it's just something different. So typically I recommend hitting the uh, compound version of any sort of muscle before doing the isolation version of hitting that same muscle. So that's just a little tip. I wouldn't recommend in the first five years of lifting to um, be doing tons and tons of isos before compounds. In fact, I'd recommend the opposite. Uh, this type of lifting I would not recommend to beginners necessarily who can perform full body exercises and compound lifts. Um, but throwing stuff in like this, um, in, in, in chunks, so to speak in mesocycles in, you know, two to four month blocks where you train a little bit more hypertrophy rep ranges and so on. Um, just to, just to hit out more of uh, muscular damage and metabolic fatigue, uh, versus training mostly for you know, tension overload, which is probably, which should be the priority of how you train. Um, it's just a different, it's just something fun, I guess you could say. But for the most part, you know, 75 plus percent of your training should be muscular tension overload based, you know, focusing on um, the weight rep sets, assuming good to great form and progressing, you know, your weight, your reps, your sets, the volume, over time, <coughs> excuse me, over time. So that, those are just some tips. Um, that's why it's not always best to train exactly how you see the person that you admire their physique trains, right? Because you're just looking into their life at a specific point and you're not really seeing necessarily how they built themselves up to that specific point, right? Like if you were to see how, I, how I'm training at this moment for the last couple months, since I've been training with my boy Chris Elkins and Gustavo, I've been we've all been doing the same program for the most part. But if you were to look in and see how we train, you'd be like, "Oh my God, that's that's how he trains." Okay, but in reality, you know, most of the time I was doing, you know, mostly just compound movements and uh, really focusing on tension overload, uh, somewhat minimalistic on uh, accessory movements and arm exercises though I wish I had done more in the past. But um, just keep that in mind, guys. You know How someone trains at the moment is necessarily how they've trained their entire life. Nor, it's not necessarily how you should train either. So a lot of different ways to train. And I hope you guys have been paying attention to the little uh, subtitles on, or the little uh, captions on the screen showing you guys what I've been hitting and, and for what reps and sets in case you wanted to write all this down. So, you know, maybe I'll even put it in the description box, but uh, we'll see. Side note, guys, I love hitting these if you have the time. Obviously, since it's left hand and right hand, you gotta do it separately. Uh, but you can get such a good stretch. I definitely recommend letting that shoulder kind of fall back behind you a bit. And then you really have to kind of mentally um, think about how you're performing it and perform it and move, move things around in such a way that uh, you find the best spot in terms of where your elbow starts and where your elbow ends. Perhaps it's keeping it in the same place, perhaps it's moving it slightly while you're curling, and so on. So definitely feel for it. It's something that you have to feel for and just mentally think about. And uh, yeah, so last thing I did is I ran the rack with uh, dumbbell curls, uh, hammer curl style right here. Uh, typically guys, if you had to just pick one bicep exercise, let's just say you're pressed for time, uh, you work a nine to five and you have kids and a wife. Uh, the one single, you know, bicep curl exercise that probably is the best bang for your buck is the supinating dumbbell curl. Starting off with a hammer curl, uh, you can do it alternating or just both at the same time. But uh, as you're curling it up, 
supinate, really pull that pinky up, and then bring it back down, but starting off with a hammer style. So that way you're working the biceps, both functions of uh, supinating while flexing the arm, and uh, it's best bang for your buck. But if you have the time, then you could do all these funky exercises that you saw me do today. It's uh, Regardless though, the staple of your bicep building should probably be barbell curls and or my preference, the supinating dumbbell curl.